Hello, I'm Jules. I write and illustrate children's picture books. One of the questions I get asked quite a lot from budding artists is how do you find your illustration style? Get ready for some tips and tricks. Imagine you have a desire to run your own cake baking business. As a child, with your mum or dad, you used to make fairy cakes. And then as you grew in confidence, perhaps you made birthday cakes. And maybe even one day you made a wedding cake. The point is you have to put in the hours. It's no different with illustrating. You can't expect to open up your first pencil case and become a fully formed artist. In fact, I've heard a useful analogy that finding your illustration style is like finding your handwriting style. It's a way of bringing together the natural way you write, that's your script, with your subject matter, what you write about, and your materials, what you are writing with. If you really want to make this your thing in life, then you have to put aside some time to make some terrible art. But don't worry, it's like contractions when you're having a baby. Each time you have one, it's one less. The good stuff is coming. These are some of the things that you need to consider when trying to decide what your style is. Number one, subject matter. What are you interested in illustrating? Is it animals or people? Landscapes? Buildings? Situations? Pick a theme that you feel most drawn to, excuse the pun, and decide to concentrate on that for the time being. For example, if you love drawing nature, just make pictures with leaves and trees and skies or pine cones or whatever takes your fancy. Number two, medium. Here's a question, what do you want to illustrate with? I mean, the choices are endless. It could be pencil, graphite or coloured, or you could use pens. You could use watercolour or acrylics. Or you could really go off piste and make your own pigments out of mud or clay or earth. My brother used to use shoe polish and a butter knife. So really, the choice is yours. Choose something that really speaks to you that you enjoy using and that is good for your subject matter. Number three, practice. Next, put pencil to paper. In other words, buy yourself a sketchbook and start using it. Malcolm Gladwell popularised the idea that you need to spend 10,000 hours to get really good at doing something. And really importantly, you need to enjoy it because if you enjoy doing the thing that you're spending lots of time doing, then it's not a chore. It becomes part of your routine and your daily life and you love it. So strike off that first of 10,000 or whatever hours, open your sketchbook and put something in it. The great thing is, the more you draw, the easier it becomes. Draw terrible things, as well as mediocre things, and soon the average will become the quite good and then the definitely encouraging. Number four, please yourself. Now here's a slightly controversial statement. Don't try to please everybody. In fact, don't try to please anybody but yourself. Art shouldn't be about what's trendy or whether you'll become famous or accepted. Art is about speaking your truth and being authentic. Your work will never, ever be universally liked. So don't even bother to think about it or try it. If you do try to please others, then you might end up working on things that you just don't like. Decide on what you want to create and then become your best at it. I came up with a line in my journal this week, mediocre is still my best. At first, that might sound like a bit of an insult, but what I actually mean is that if you are being judged by other people and they think you are being very average about something, but it's still your best, then I think there's nothing to worry about. Their judgment doesn't mean a thing because if you're doing your best, you literally can't do any better. Good for you. Number five, be different. Dare to be different. If we were all the same and liked the same stuff, life would be pretty boring. 
Being uniquely you is an exciting thing. So tell the world what is inside of you by way of illustrating. Art directors who are looking for artists are searching for consistency and uniqueness. Number six, consistency. And that brings us on to consistency, which is something I learnt about at university. Art college is supposed to be a place where you can try out all sorts of things and find out what suits you. And it's all very well having pieces of work in lots of different styles, but you have to pick one that speaks your language. Otherwise, an art director won't know which you is going to turn up on the day. Build a portfolio of work that people can recognise is distinctly your thing. And that loops back to putting in the hours and practising. Because if you only have a handful of finished pieces of work, how can you have a style to choose from? Number seven, other artists. Lastly, it's my firm belief that you can learn more by looking at other artists' work than anything else. Which illustrators are you drawn to? Examine how they work and what they use. Have a look on YouTube to see if they have any tutorials. You will learn a ton by watching another artist create. It can be a really good exercise to copy an image of an artist that you like and see how close you can get to the original. It will teach you a lot about method. Online there is a hashtag called draw this in your style or D-T-I-Y-S where an artist posts an illustration of theirs and fellow artists recreate the image in their style and use that hashtag. That way you can see the composition and theme in many different styles. It's really worth a look and if you're game, have a go! Hey folks, if you are as excited about books and art as I am, then you might be interested in these courses that will teach you what I know. Make a Picture Book Step by Step will help you go about writing, illustrating and publishing your own picture book. It's a comprehensive course, starting with making your key decisions and takes you all the way to making your print-ready copy. Do you need to know how to draw children, or dragons, or sea creatures? These shorter classes will help you do just that. Pop over to my website and see what's on offer. Go on, give it a go. Next week I will be squeezing out the last few drops of winter and showing you how to paint a snow scene for your picture book. Until then, I'm off to mug a magpie. I will see you next week. Nanu nanu.